Well, I'm looking at the focus of this thing and I cannot work out whether it's me or the camera, so I'm just going to have to go along with it. It's, my eyes aren't focusing as well as what they should be. Anyway, just to. Um, this is like a Tarantino movie because I got through the first one of these I was doing today and, uh, well, I got part way through and put the switch in, you know, the buttons in and stuff and soldered them and then decided to just point out a couple of things. Um, one is that it's always good to get a container to trip all this stuff in if you don't want to knock it about the place it's a lot a lot easier uh, link in the other in the other segment of this video I said that you want to put all the um, all the buttons now, it goes on this side where the power button that you can see it says power uh, and bits and pieces then written down here so all the all the buttons they've got two cutouts on one side I should check with this we've got two cutouts uh, on this side two slits and one on there so the two slit side wants to be facing towards the power on all of the buttons and for these I'll tell you what you know it's just as simple to put all these in he says in the first one it's probably got bent legs because it's not going there you go just to put them all in uh, this is the beauty about this particular board, putting this board together is hopefully as well that you won't have too many legs that are bent out and that you've got to put them into uh, into placing now I'm not going to chat through putting all these buttons in or I could do but it's not going to be anything that's going to be any help, help to anybody because I'm going to speed this part up so from this point onwards these I'm speeding it up There you go. Now, there's only one more button to put on. Um, these are all uh, momentary. You just press it down while while you've got it pressed, it does something, but it doesn't lock down. The only one that does that, and it's very nice of them to have it separated by putting the by putting the little um, the button knob, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you call this thing. It is a knob, but you don't turn it here. Um, 
and then put that down and this is a it's the power button on and off so clicky up clicky down but we can take that off and this is the same applies for this it, they all go in exactly the same direction which makes it really really simple um, but you might just have some that the legs aren't quite now uh, the legs aren't quite so flush you might fiddle to put them in so a quick visual check will let you see that uh, everything is in line nothing's sticking out now the simplest way of doing this I just use this is the, uh, the front and the back I pop that over like that turn them over like that simple now I can just get on and solder them no faffing around um, I, I pick two down on each uh, top right bottom left doesn't really matter which ones you do um, but just peg them down turn it over check that everything's okay before you do the do the rest and that will give you a um, you know that, that will give you a good a good running because then all you've got is a, a few bits um, just while I think about it these two that separate the two parts of the, uh, the interior they're two different sizes one smaller than the other this one screws in the smaller part screws in to the bigger part and you want to make sure that the smaller part is the facing panel so the bigger part goes here to the back and the smaller part goes to the, to the front um, and you know it's pretty straightforward these electrolytics pretty straightforward I mean even though even the sizes of the electric, the the, you know, the, the markings for where they go are, are bigger, but you still want to check and just make sure you get the right ones in the right places. So I'm just going to whiz through, fast forward on this bit, just soldering these up. And like I say, I'll pin two to do the other uh, on all of them, and then I'll check it just to make sure everything's in line, and then I'll I'll do the rest. But I'm going to fast forward that because I've got to pause for a second, make a cup of tea. And also I've got to put the salt right on so it warms up so just for that bit I'm gonna I'm gonna pause okay uh, right I'm just trying to think of what else I can tell you about this kit I can tell you that uh, out of all the kits not all of them but out of a lot of the kits that I've built this is one of the easiest ones when you first get it it doesn't seem like that you got this to contend with um, and you got all these little buttons to put in but like I say if you were to put them all in the way I, way I showed you if you do the same thing using the parts that come with it uh, you know you can do a visual check like I said and you can see all these little soldiers are in line that's good apart from the power one uh, put that on top and just push on it just firm enough to keep everything in place turn it over and there you go let's move that out of the way that's from testing the other one I just built so and then what are we going to do then is just to chuck it that's your soldier 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 um, across them um, I do a uh, top right bottom left just because it's easy for me if you're left-handed or have another preference to doing this you'll find your own you know, way it's literally just a case of tacking them on I mean I pretty much know these are going to be fine because I can tell when one's out of place or I can just uh, do what I just did which is like just bash everything out a little bit but if you've got a um, you don't need any paste flux I've got I know I've got that paste flux open there but the only reason I use that is when I'm doing the USB part in order because I'm using just tiny bits of solder on those little those little connectors um, and just to make sure that it flows to the pad and doesn't go anywhere else so I just chuck a bit of paste on there it just saves a bit of time and um, because of the metal casing of the USB uh, can sometimes be a bit of a pig. Uh, yeah, you can a little bit. A little, okay, it can be a bit more awkward, or it can be awkward compared to like doing this now. 
which is simple and straightforward. Of course, having a soldering iron which remains at the temperature that you want it at really does help. Um, and having solder that doesn't spit and has flux in it really helps because, as I was about to say, um, because this has already got flux in it, I don't need to put any flux on the board. So we got minimal, minimal mess. Uh, I'm actually doing top left to bottom right now. Don't know why, just automatically went like that. So nice and simple. You don't need a great deal of solder either, it's not as though you need a big. Oh, well, we got the power one down here, I mustn't forget that. Mustn't forget the power one. Now, I built up the other one that I was showing you before that I got part way through it. Um, quickly tested it, and that's all fine. So, yeah, just looking down, those look a little still uniform, none of them are pushed out or anything. So that's ideal, I can just turn it back over and continue the soldering. So for this little bit I'm going to speed up through this bit. Okay, so like I said it's nice and simple. The, um, going through these, there's nothing really noteworthy. It is a case of just make sure that they're you know, lined up. And that's that. That's that is the majority of this kit done. It is. Uh, I suppose that's in some ways. It's, it's not the most time-consuming. Um, the most time-consuming, I suppose, is getting the front on. But you don't want to get it all grubbed up, and you take the the, the wrapper off this. Uh, it's black, gloss black, and so it's dead easy to get fingerprints all over it. Uh, what I do is as soon as I get it done I get it wrapped I get it wrapped I get and um, god damn it and you can still see bits on there <laughs> and I've painstakingly I got no idea where all the bits come from it's like it just attracts it it's probably I'm probably making it statically charged or something but, and I just wrap it up I just wrap it up put a bit of tape on it and that's you know that's pretty much ready for me to ship I've already tested it anyway and I just got to put the cable to it and get that sent out to whoever wants it. So, yeah. So that's it. So now, I tend to put the back on. There, there is an instruction for this, so you, you don't have to, um, don't have to really, you know, listen to anything I'm saying at all, really. There is an instruction. Uh, I keep it to hand because it is nice to just have a little quick little look at every now and then especially when you're just trying to um, remember the capacitors and where they go uh, on the back here of the assembly instructions it tells you about the capacitors so basically two there the four simply them to the 100s we just chuck those in so four simply yeah. minus 100 Remember the, the capacitors are polarized and um, we want to make sure we get that the right way around. There's one thing about doing these sort of things is you're better off double checking and taking the time to check and double check because if you put one of these in wrong and you've got to get it out again, that's where the biggest problems lie. That's where the biggest problems lie because it is a pain in the backside getting these things back out so you're better off checking and double checking that you're getting them in the right way around in the right places because it will save you time and frustration that's the last thing you want to do is damage the board you overheat it or you haven't got a heat gun and you use your soldering iron and you overheat it Oh, excuse me, I went out for breakfast with my friend this morning. I think it's um, 
Just trying to remind me of what I had. Uh, so, there we go. So, yeah, so we just uh, chuck the capacitors on, get them a quick solder. Quick little flick with a solder. Pull that down so I can see nicely. I don't use the um, because it, it, it changes the temperature of your iron and it's a lot easier to. Uh, it would be if I could actually get these two to touch together. There we go. It's a lot easier to uh, to work with an iron that stays at a constant temperature. So I got a. Um, well, they're insisting that I give them feedback. I did have a brass. Uh, what they call it when you're doing metal work and you get. Oh, is it filings? Not filings. Trimmings or shavings, that's it. Uh, brass shavings. I've got one of those for cleaning the tip and I wore suit and that was like three and a half pounds so that was quite an expensive one but I got it because the last one that I got um, it, it just tended it just rusted up really quickly and just ended up being like a lot of dust and I don't really want that sort of dust flying about the environment where I spend quite a bit of time now, for some reason, that particular, this one here is not, not soldering as well as I should do. And I seem to have gone all khaki handed with it, but no mind, oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, that's nice and pretty. I don't like messy solder, I like it to be nice and pretty. I always think that you, you should try and put these things out as you'd like it to come into you. Which, and I'm quite fussy. I'm quite particular. Well, I am if I get things, you know, come into me that are supposed to be nice, and they're not. Right, so, I think I'm going to put the USB, I'm going to put the stuff on the other side, the power, the USB, um, and the switch. Now on these, there is nothing, there's nothing really to, to report. The USB, we tend to use a little bit of, because um, you're working with such, in, because um, it's so small, and these five pins are quite close together. Um, I just took a bit of flux in there just to help the solder flow into where it's supposed to be. Uh, a little bit easier. So these are on the back. That's, that's the front. That means that all these are on the back. The power socket goes on the back. The USB goes on the back. So that sort of just pushes in, holds itself in, which is quite nice. And this power socket will do the same, the same thing. It'll just hold itself in place. I like to just check that it's sat nice and square within the silk screen markings because there's nothing more annoying than having something like this or at least for me more annoying than having something like this and it's it's set out of place and me i just oh i want to get it into place and like i say i, I sort of do these to i do them to the quality i'd like to receive them and to one that i know that i won't it won't just annoy the life out of me if that's not quite in place and I try to sleep tonight knowing that's like that that will uh, that will cause me some confusion in my sleep that will uh, that'll probably actually just make me get up and do it sort it out come on um Yes, that's it, just the headers. Uh, these headers, simple. You've got two that face outwards this way. Both these are the same size, so nice and simple. Just pop them in. Now I get, there's another piece. Oh, it's not that bit, it's a bit, a bit chunkier than that. And there's another piece of, uh, here it is. 
that comes with this. This is actually a, I think this part goes on the screen. I don't know, unpacked, but it's from the from the other one. I'll just pop that on the back there, um, and then just to, uh, didn't do that right, did I? Pop it on the back, and uh, and then I know that they're just in place. And again, I just I just pin two of them or one of them at this angle just to check. Just clean off of that. So oh, beautiful. Uh, and this solder that I use, I've got a new one coming. Unfortunately, it's just the same as all I am with beer bottles I tend to pull off the labels and I pulled off the label but I will uh, put down this solder because this solder is great I've got three other reels up there and I find them a little bit annoying this is supposed to be the finest of from China um, and it's 0.3 this is the other one that I'm using is 0.5 this is all 0.3 it's all got flux in it but it's a bit spitty and you need the temperature up you need soldering iron on a hotter temperature for it. This, my soldering iron's on 325 uh, Fahrenheit, and I'm quite happy soldering away with this. And I'm quite happy soldering away with it. One more bit. Uh, right, let's put this in. Now, this one, you want the this one it was the long pins and that on that side this time you want it on this side because this is what the screen fits to there you go nice and easy again this is where this really comes in handy because i've got that that uh that switching which pushes it up It's because I'm pulling the solder too quickly to the pad. I'm not letting the pad get warm enough before I'm trying to chuck the solder on. That's why it uh, looks a bit awkward for... Let's make sure that's nice and flush. That's nice and flush. Good. And let me go. I'll go back over that joint because it doesn't look the, the nicest. Of course the idea is to put the solder iron on for you know a second before you actually expect the pad to be warm enough to have the solder just melt to it. But you always want to check your alignment, don't just do the first one and start soldering the rest because if it's not lined up properly, try and line it up with them all soldered. He's a bit of a man. Look at that lot, I just double checked again then. <laughs> Remembering from my first one that it's a bit of a man. Um, it's always good to good to check. And occasionally you, in the solder you'll get a bit and it seems like it doesn't melt the same. It's almost like maybe not be as much flux in it. Maybe there's a little bit of a manufacturing defect. But it's not cheap solder. I suppose it's not the most expensive. I can't remember. Black Knight or something? Knight? No, I can't remember. But there is quite an expensive solder out there. This one's like £14. Just under £14 or real. real. Uh, that includes delivery as well. For a 250 gram roll. And I've got another roll coming on Friday. It'll be my second roll of this particular solder and out of all the solders apart from one actually that I've used up um, which is another one from China but it's got a green wrapper uh, beautiful that's all straight as we want it now all we got left is to put the front on the the display and then put that that uh, I've lost it. Oops, oh here it is, it's in the back. 
Because the kit comes in one of these bags. I should have probably told you more about the kit, shouldn't I? But no, it just comes in one of these bags. Um, everything comes, you know, wrapped. And as you saw, the, the cases and such, this is from the first one, uh, they come wrapped. Um, you don't want to scratch them, they got the, uh, the protective the protective uh, plastic on it. They pull that off before you put it together. This has got a protective plastic as well, but I'll solder it all first in case we get a spit uh, before I peel that off and put the front on. I won't peel that off until I'm ready to put the front directly on because I just don't want to get any, any shot on it. Now, that's just the way that goes. It sort of just fits like that. There's no, there's nothing, you know, to hold that up at an angle or anything. It just, it just sits on there like that, and it's not terribly bad. You can see it's not 100% um, at the correct angle. I suppose I could try and put something underneath there to do it, but to be fair, uh, my one was the first one that I did. Uh, and I've had this one once. It did have an issue, um, but it seems to have cleared itself up. I think I figured out why that was, um, and all the mistakes I made were on this. <laughs> but it still works great. It still works great, and you know I, I, I disconnect and put in this BNC connection, and the, the connection here is sound. I don't have any issues with dodgy connections or anything. So uh, it's great. It's great. It's got a little job to do for me later on. I've got a little transformer. That I want to just push an AC signal through and then uh, start experimenting with what I can get out of voltage on the other side of the little tiny transformer pushing an AC signal through on there 50 Hertz AC signal 10 volt P2P see what I get on the other side and then start turning the frequency up higher and higher and higher and see how it adjusts the voltage uh, on the other side as a little experiment something for me to do as I haven't done that yet, I know what to sort of expect, um, but I just haven't done it for myself, so. Alright, so, there we go, so all that's soldered up. That all looks good, all looks in place, how it's supposed to be. I'm not going to take this off just yet. Uh, I don't know if you can see on there, there's, you probably, you may not be able to, but there's just a little tiny bit of splat, which is a little squidge where the flux or the part of the solder is just splatted off, so it's always good to leave that on until you've finished your soldering. So I'm just doing a quick little visual double check over it, just to make sure I've not missed anything, any of the pins on anything. Always good. And so there we go. So that is pretty much part of the input. I mean, I could check voltages now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it all together because I know that it should be fine. Uh, I should be able to see now if there's any errors coming my way. Well, solar panel's still charging things. And I'm on a very overcast day, but I've got just enough power to charge my phone, which is great. It's always nice, nice feeling. Um, Right, so yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to get this and I'm going to bend this over because I know that it needs to be bent round about like that. I also know that it needs to be down about halfway. Uh, and that's where my... Uh, that's what I do, I sort of I get it so it's near enough bent in the right angle but it's going to be slightly off which means when it goes inside that little hole, it's going to be pushing against the side of it. So it's like a bit of a mechanical connection and not just reliant on a... Now this is where it gets a little bit... Because you've got to take this off now. And this is the front, you see. And this is what I've got to do is I've got to put this through here. Put all this on the back. Blah, blah, blah. And then sit that across the front there. And as soon as I'm ready to put that across the front there, I'm going to take this off and dump it down. But you know, my hands are they're a little bit, not manky, clammy, but I'm doing stuff and I've got a, uh, like a sports jacket on just to keep me nice and warm while I'm just sat around. There we go. 
It's not quite as good a feeling as taking the front off a new phone. But, you know, it's, it's nearly there. Oh, I'll be a king. I'll be a king. Beautiful. And that's where you get nice and clean and shining. All you can do with this now is put fingerprints all over the blooming thing and... Hey, and there you go. So we've got to pop that in there. We're going to turn it over, put all the gummings on the back. Damn it, I've already put a palm print on it. <laughs> we're going to try and do all this without getting any, any mess on it. And have you got any bits of flux or anything on your fingers or any oils coming out of your, your body? <laughs> so there we go. That might be a little bit too high. I might have to... I'm hoping I might just be able to squeeze that, squeeze that in. So let me just do a quick check. So that would just go. Yeah, that's lined up. Okay, so I should probably actually, it's probably a good idea thinking about it to do this first. Now remember these two. There's only a little tiny difference in size but the smallest one the bit with the the screwy part in wants to go in from the top so the small part in the top beautiful all right you still got all the knobs and then they always give you a, a spare one of these just in case that's the spare one from the last one so we should have two spares in there now. Let's check the front on. Let's see. Got to be careful not to. Uh... Oh, in actual fact, it's probably a good idea if we put these buttons on uh, first. <laughs> I'm getting the bit in front of myself, getting too excited that this is a. Uh... So I'm gonna. I'll speed through this a little bit. There we go, and of course, for the power button, we've got the red one. There's this button, which is on and off. Lovely. Okay, let's grab all of this again. And now we've got all the buttons protruding through, and they should all be in a perfect position for just going through. That's all good. Let's whip this off. Okay, not so easy from that side. And on the last one, it's so easy to get off. And this one's proven to be a little bit better stuck on it's supposed to be. That feels so good pulling that off. Lovely and shiny. Oh, nice. Let's not muck it up. We know that this is all going to fit nice. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, because I don't anticipate too much faffing around with this, oh, then again, I should probably just make sure it all lines up nicely. Yeah, so that's good. That's good that I didn't just screw it all down. It's not as a big problem, which is that I could probably just do with this being just one turn down just to make sure I get a nice mechanical connection inside there oh there we go and even though it may seem like this is going to be loose it won't be it won't be just to help myself out here i was going to put a, a screw in each corner just so this baby stays together while i'm faffing with it I'm not going to put them all in just in case I do need to take it out for any reason. I don't think I'm going to need to, but it just cuts down on fapping about if, uh, if I just put the two in. One each side. Yeah, if I can get over the screw again. The screws are tiny. There we go. Right, put the there. Now what I'm going to do now is get over to this. Where's my tweezers gone? Pull that round, there we go. Let's 
That's probably the most fiddliest part of it. It's just getting that into there. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is while that's like that, I'm just going to chuck a bit of solder into that. Uh, to keep that all in place. And perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I just want all that to stay. This is the most fiddliest part. And it really does help if you have yourself a pair of tweezers. It really, really does. And I'm just going to chug, because I just want to make sure that, that really goes down into the solder. I'll chuck a big bit of a blob on there. Clean. Oh, hold on, very important. Oh, a quick little sip of my tea. Before it gets too cold. You can't see what I'm doing, but let me just. Solder in place, or that's going to melt very much. I'll press this. This is looking a bit more complicated than what it is actually now. This is, I just want to get this at a, an angle where I can, I can get to. I'm not really sort of prepared for the, trying to get great angles. Um, whilst doing the video now this is going to prove to be a bit of a a Uranus I know it's not very good because I didn't actually show you um, I put a little bit of solder uh, in the bottom here and so I could just hold this into place while I started just tacking it to there and we want to make sure that it gets quite a nice connection but now I'm going to, I'm going to put some a nice bit of lava of solder on there now just to make sure it's got a good good connection and just check that middle pin that wants to be there to make sure that gets a good connection and I can just ensure that's where it's supposed to be That gets a nice tight connection there. Now I'm going to give this a, a good bit of solder just to um, just make sure it all holds into place nicely. Has popped a lot into there. Oh, that's, that's good. That's a good, nice tight connection. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, right. Just for the the sake of argument. Uh, before I just, I'm just going to chuck the back on. Now, there's a little hole in the back, and I must also point out the display has a contrast adjustment, and that contrast adjustment is right next to that crystal. Uh, if I move that there, right next to that crystal, you can see. Oh, you can see there. Look, that little tiny screw head. There's the. Oh, there's the crystal, and there's the little screw head there. And so you can adjust it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to flip the power on because I want you to see how they sometimes come on. And you might think, oh, oh it doesn't work. But no, it's just the contrast and you just need to adjust the contrast. So I stick the connector in. This is 15 volts. Center pin is the positive. Center pin is the positive. So when you, you know, if you, if you do get yourself one of these, put it together. Just remember, 15 volt center pin outer is negative, center pin is a positive. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna flick it on. Let's put the power on the power supply. 15 volts, beautiful. Uh, now I I I I 
I'm a lucky bugger and I've got I spent enough all my pennies on this power supply so I can make sure that my input ampage is no more than 300 milliamp so if there is a problem I'm less I'm uh, you know, fingers crossed I'm going to do less damage to this if there is a problem no my rights there shouldn't be a problem and I'll be okay but if I were to go into this 15 volts and like the same amp and there was an issue and it just sucked up that amp and buffed but we got problems and so and so I, like I said I'm very lucky I, I, I spent my pennies and I've got a power supply that I can actually control so anyway so let's turn the power on oh this is a good example uh, you can hardly see it you can hardly see it you could think there's a fault it could be that you wouldn't be able to see it at all um, so what you gotta do is very very carefully going over this controller I'm gonna try and do this looking through the camera there we go and I'm just gonna back it off we can do it to my eye a little tiny bit because I don't like the back having any of the other I can just barely see it so I'm just gonna I like the back to be completely empty of all of the LCD there we go so there you go that's it it's there working I'm pretty confident it'll be outputting the uh, I, I am actually trying to hold this straight with my coordination looking in the mirror in the monitor sorry and trying to adjust myself um, so yeah there you, just, there you go and then it's the user next that takes a second or two because there's nothing in there it's an arbitrary jobby and then back to sign beautiful no problems I'm quite confident that's outputting the signal as it should be um, I probably I will do a quick check before I send them out. Uh, that's it. That's it. To build one of these, uh, the next, the last part is uh, just chucking on the back, taking that bit off there. This side here, of course, faces outwards because this is the beautiful shiny side, just like that, which is getting covered in fingerprints and just messiness so that's it that's the last part to chucking that together and you don't really need to see me doing that you end up with the spare part uh, makes it all worthwhile <laughs> and you get the and you get the uh, you know the, the, the BNC these are not too bad actually like I said I've been playing on my one for months now and, uh, and, it, and it's great so all that works well so there you have it it's the um, JTEC, JYE Tech uh, FG085.